So hello and welcome everybody. We are live now for a game of dialect. Um, that's part of the Gauntlet Wednesday morning drama series. I'm um, facilitating once in a while for the Gauntlet community. And dialect just recently came out in the final PDF version and I'm I won't get a, a physical copy, unfortunately, but it looks lovely, especially with what they are doing with Dianicorn is the name, I think, where they're knitting or, or weaving a, a part of the game, actually. That looks so beautiful. So the only thing I could do was doing this overlay. Now you have at least part of the uh, graphs and symbols from the book on the screen here. So we um, want to play a uh, dialect. Dialect is a game about an isolated community and how they develop their own language. So for us, when we are playing this, this is mainly about learning how language influences societies and how the language is influenced by societies. I played this last week with my six-year-old son and um, we didn't complete it, uh, but we played until age three. That was two hours, so we now have two sessions each maximum three hours so we can end early today and end early next time if we want or we take the full time and uh, actually i'm very much looking forward to play a game where we have all the time we need and i think that is especially suiting for a game of dialect where we could also like talk intensely about the language we create um, we'll create an isolated community and see how it begins, rises, and then ends in three phases, and then telling the legacy of that. And while doing that, we create new words on fundamental aspects of the community, who they are, what they believe in, and how they respond to a changing world. So I'm partly quoting part of the game book by Hakan and Catherine, um, and partly using my own words. Very suitable for a game about creating words. Um, so um, I'm the facilitator, but the game is GMless. That means my role, as the book, the rule book says, is that I should know the game. I tried my best to learn the rules. Uh, haven't finished the final exam yet, <laughs> or understood it all, <laughs> but we'll figure out today. Um, I'm responsible for keeping the play tight and also making space for those who are too much in the background. Um, I feel very comfortable with being in that role, and I also feel very comfortable sharing that role. So you can help me as much as you want and take over. Especially if I have internet issues, just continue playing. I'm in Guatemala, a place where the local language is Tsutuhil, only spoken by 100,000 people in the world. And um, so if my language disappears, it's unfortunately too likely, but um, um, my internet connection could also, and much easier even, disappear because it's a quite re remote area I live in. <laughs> but let's hope it all goes fine. Um, as players, we should all be obvious about what we are doing. So don't hesitate to explain why you brought something up. Um, listen to the others and be kind in the interpretation others are doing. The tone we want to aim for, it's very open in dialect. You can play it very funny, you can play it explorative and adventurous, but um, today, because it's Wednesday morning drama, I thought we'd play on a much more serious note than could go. Emotionally intense, maybe even, let's see, depending how it develops. Um, also, I would like to play a realistic game, so I didn't pick the from the backdrops, the available backdrops, the, the mask setting, or not the setting where you play robots and artificial intelligences, <laughs> but the one where you play a community which in 1982 decided to leave uh, the rest of the world behind and build a compound and live there just 200 people on their own. There's an introduction text we can read later. Uh, the X card is on the table. Um, you can cross your arms. You can use our Google Hangout chat and type an X there, and we will rewind and uh, change the content to something more suitable. But we should also just take the time to carefully explore what we're in, especially 
with such a community, I could imagine that there come things up which like personal belief, for example. And uh, although I, I'm, I'm not a religious person, I have as much respect as possible for every belief and every faith system, as long as they respect other human beings in the way they want to live. And so, for example, if we decide that our community has a, a religious background or so, that would be, for example, something which could be quite sensitive. I would be open for that, but it's our decision. All right, so we have three hours today, not anymore, just two hours and 45 minutes. And uh, we will create the compound together we play, and then we do character creation. Then we will have a little break of five minutes. And please remind me at any other point in time when we're playing the game. I think the phases between the ages is the best moment to interrupt the game, but any other time would also be good to take other breaks. And we already discussed before going live that it might happen that we have visitors in our homes and we might need to break them for a little bit. If you hear background noises, my son comes back from school some point in time and will for sure jump into the camera and <laughs> do a video bombing. Um, yeah, but he's fine. He doesn't speak English, so he will not understand anything. <laughs> no worries. Um, so we uh, I do. I do have to say, I, I I love how you've planned the chickens amongst this whole part as the start of the event. <laughs> yes, the roosters. Our neighbors. Our neighbors have these chickens, and I I'm always happy when I hear them because it means they are still alive. I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not so happy at four in the morning. Anyway, yeah, so we have uh, two documents. One is uh, somehow the character spreadsheet. As, um, it's like where we have our compound and our play map in place with the ages. Uh, and we also have um, uh, a document where all the cards are on. Like on the original game, we draw cards and um, from different decks, and that's quite complicated. In, to be done. In Roll20, no problem, but I don't have a paid subscription for Roll20. In Roll for your part, it can also be done, but it's not that straightforward to be done. So we do a slightly more randomless version of the game by picking the cards instead of drawing them randomly. All right. So this is all I have to say for the introduction, and we would come then already to part three. Um, would you like to add something? Did I miss something? Otherwise, we would start with creating our compound. You all right? Good. Cool. Yeah. I can't see your thumbs because your thumbnail are, are cutting the thumbs away, but I assume they are not going down, but they are going up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mas o menos in Spanish. Yes. <laughs> Good. All right, then let's uh, bring you to the documents I created. The, the relevant one right now is the GWMD dialect, the compound. So we first create our compound, and the compound is defined by its nickname. We come up with it at the, at the very end. This is how the compound is known. Uh, by the inhabitants. And, but before, the most important part are three aspects which define the compound and e everything what our characters are about. So we should really take the time to think about what we want to see there. These are like fate aspects. They are like very, like a slogan defined. They should be uh, evocative. They, they should be clear to all of us what they shall mean. Um, so we. We, we should spend some work in there, and we have a guideline how to create them. And that's you can all of, also find in um, the procedures document, which is available to you. But first of all, let's uh, read the, the introduction from the compound. And because I'm not a native speaker in English, I would like to ask Paul, because I love his voice, to read uh, the introduction of the compound to us. Shall I copy it somewhere else, or do you have it in front of you, Paul? Uh, is this in the, the process document? Yes, it's under the game 3.1. 
create okay. isolation. But I can also copy it elsewhere if you prefer. No, I've got it. I'm I'm right there. This yes. is sorry to steal your professional reading skills. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. This is the. These are the givens. We've seen what's to become of the world, and we're not interested in being a part of it any longer. 200 strong in number, we decided to make 1982 the year that we found ourselves a new home. We built our compound at a breakneck pace. Until recently, we still had to venture to the outside world from time to time for necessary supplies. How we dreaded those departures and longed to be back among our own again. Mercifully, those days are now behind us, and for 20 years, we have known true solitude. We have walls, we have barracks, and we produce enough food that we will never have to set foot in the outside world again. Excellent. Does it all sound good? That's the latest point. You can veto this backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. I'm yeah. good with it. I think it's the most challenging in terms of seriosity. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, and this is why I chose it, because I trust you, fellow gauntleteers, that we can make this work. Yeah. So the aspects, make them big, make them clear, make them bite. And the structure is like this, that aspect one uh, and aspect two are defined by the backdrop, and the third is completely free, something we are all excited about to explore. So we still have this one joker at the very end, so the other two can be very distinct about the compound setup and the third one then opens the horizon. The first one is the question we should answer with that one is the way what flock. What about who we are made the compound a necessity? That's something to think about. I think the I think the year that's mentioned in that setup, that 1982, I think gives a little bit of a clue, um, or something at least to think about. Yeah, because we're right then at the very beginning of that that uh, bright lights, big city, uh, ex excess, and and you know, cocaine snorting uh, stock traders and and a, a lot of that stuff. So it could be it could be something like that, but. I'm just I'm just throwing stuff out, just throwing out an idea because the the year gave me that thought. When I was thinking of um, yeah, that like that era, uh, part of what I was thinking of is is also uh, and and kind of to your point, Paul, like with with that uh, all the the cocaine and drugs and drug trade and drug war. I was kind of more thinking of the other side of the of the fence where I grew up because I was here in the U.S. But like. More like if you're you're somewhere else remote where this stuff is being farmed and you are trying to get away from that. Like, you know, you have somebody who's in a lot of power with a lot of <laughs> stake because this is a lot of money and maybe they have a lot of arms and we are people who want to get away from that. So I was almost thinking kind of like, a, you know, a, a smaller country and we're the people who, who don't want to be involved with, with the the drug trafficking, but more the violence behind it, right? Like the, the power structures that are maintaining that. I love it, yeah. Yeah, I like that, that that's cool. I, I hadn't even, it's funny for a second, I had not even considered the fact that we could be anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, of course we're in the United States, where else would we be? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, imagine being in, uh, you know, in Colombia in the early days when you've got, you know, three different factions all trying to kill each other and producing drugs and money and and taking hostages and, and doing violence, something like that could be worth avoiding. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, Colombia, I think, is a great idea because they are close to having elections mm -hmm. uh, right now. So I, I always love to have a game which afterwards gives me reason to follow the news more carefully about place, a culture, or something. So, um, and since we are stepping out of society, we don't have to know too much about it, how it has developed. That could help that we present it carefully enough. 
<laughs> so, are we okay with um like if we do decide to go this route of like a smaller country and you know like we've defined um do we want to go the route of making it like not a real country so we don't have to worry about you know uh I don't know any any historical accuracy. I mean, I know we can kind of play with it because we're we're out anyways. But do we want it to be like a Columbia, or do we want it to be like a, um, you know, like in Black Panther, you've got your your Wakanda, right? Your your pseudo but fake African place, right? That yeah, kind of I, I don't think it actually ma it shouldn't matter very much because we're not engaged with that country anymore. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, that's all backstory. Yeah, so we're our, sovereign. Our, our aspect, our aspects is is about what caused us to withdraw, and I don't think it has to be detailed enough to yeah. to cause a problem. Cool. In my mind. All right. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. So, um, Colombia would be a good place. It's 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 a country sufficiently large to hide in the jungle. <laughs> um. So how would we phrase that? It's like uh, getting the question was, what about who we are made the compound a necessity? Victims of drug violence in that direction? Or violence and oppression? Yeah. So how's, how to phrase a good aspect out of that? So we are all, sounds like a good start. And now I'm switching to the um, compound uh, document again, the Google drawing. I could actually put this on on my screen by with screen sharing. How about that works, that right? How about uh, the I see, but yeah. who we are. I would prefer for it to be phrased um, a little more actively. We will not be victims in ah. someone else's war. Yeah, Interesting. I agree. Or I was thinking about survivors. Yeah, but yeah, I just uh, the the you know I think being victims isn't isn't uh, active enough. For yeah. a community that has that has managed to isolate itself, so we freed ourselves. Yeah. We freed ourselves from the drug war. from the terror of drug war. That works. Yeah. So I don't know if you played the game already, actually, but I could just pretend to talk to the audience, the potential audience, the 10 views <laughs> this has in the end, maybe. Um, but um, it, later in character creation, every archetype is relating to these aspects by in, in different ways, like supporting it, identifying with it, making fun of it. or yeah, in, So it, it will be very interesting how, how this aspect will relate to our characters. At least one, I'm sure, will oppose it in some way. OK, so let's move on to the next. Um, so where is it? Uh, here, OK. Aspect two, more than walls. What special property about the compound keeps us secure? Hmm. So is, it, is that something geographical or a mentality? Ooh. So <laughs> when we were very, like, not even starting to talk about the main premise or just even when Paul uh, first started mentioning it, my first thoughts were something like, um, you know, an, an island or whatever. But, uh, I mean, in a lot of these jungles, you've got um you know in remote destination you've got you know large rivers that flow through right but it would be fascinating if there's this kind of large river and there's almost like a a, a large island within the river itself right so the river kind of flows around it so you have this the border is almost like the the river itself wow. right yeah and it could be full of giant crocodiles and piranhas 
It is. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, that's my thought, but I don't know. Does anybody? No, I think it's good. Yeah. Well, can you also agree on, th on that? Oh, yeah, I'm fine with that. I, I had already been thinking island, even before Tomer said it, so. Now we have to make this into an aspect following our constraints. Make them big, make them clear, make them bite. A river runs around it. <laughs> That's great. That seems to be a quote, and I don't get it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, not quite the title of a, of a Robert Redford movie, which was A River Runs Through It. Uh -huh. Let's see, something we're all excited to... Yeah, like I'm thinking about how the characters could relate to that aspect too. Um, so I, I wonder if, if we get a certain kind of philosophy out of that, like the flow of the river or that everything is things passing by but don't belong to us. Yeah, yeah, the idea. Like, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say there's a level of confidence around it, which is sometimes misplaced. Like when you have this river around it, you feel like you're protected. You have a very defined boundary. You could let your kids run wild in this island because you know that they can't go far and nobody can get here easily. And yet it's still just a river. Anybody can take a boat and get from one place to another. So I think there's a level of confidence that the that we may have that may be a little bit misplaced, right? Cool. Right, and I, I think rivers are just, in terms of character creation stuff, yeah. rivers themselves are just rife for metaphor and personal interpretation, just the fact oh. that the word river is there. Yeah. So yeah. I, think, I think it will be fruitful. Yeah, it's, I, I already, my, my brain is all, already like a waterfall, <laughs> 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 running through all the concepts <laughs> relating them to the river. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So now we have one aspect left, and that's the free aspect. We totally are totally free to choose however we like. Whew. Bar. And yeah, it should be independent from the other two. So I. I like maybe something which has to do with like what kind of people we are like is it maybe hmm. i mean so given like we as players are not that familiar with uh necessarily with you know this location right like we none of us have grown up here right it would be kind yeah. of interesting if um there's a certain uh, unfamiliarity or, or alienation that we feel and it's not necessarily because we're from another land like we could be we could be um, you know uh, kind of natives of this land that had been misplaced and now we're going back to where our ancestors came from but we we don't know I mean we, none of us grew up here right so we are yeah. from this place and we're kind of returning back to our homeland but uh, we're gonna have to start from scratch right Ah, yeah. So it, it's about a, like, a, a kind of spiritualism which doesn't come naturally to us. Yeah. But like we believe we, we belong here, but somehow we are... And, we grew like up in the city. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it's almost... And I like the idea of we're returning to our home because instead of us looking at it as, okay, well, we're trying to make a home in this unknown place, like we're actually trying to reclaim what should be ours or something, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, that would be a good aspect of, by itself, just a, a return home or something like that yeah. um, is, pre is pretty punchy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we know what we mean with it, and that's the most important part in right. the phrasing. So I write home with capital H. 
interesting that it's already somehow starts with language creation here. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's nearly like as if you can't use aspects which without already changing the meaning of them slightly. Like what we mean with home, what we mean with the river. Yeah. Yeah. Return home. Yeah. Yeah, so and it, just to clarify, so we think of like Mother Nature, our home country, the world of our ancestors. This is the direction, right? This this goes to. Yeah. Return home, or maybe return. Yeah, we are there. Returned to our home. I'm. Yeah, I'm not sure. You might be better suited to fix that or is return home already good for you i think return home works i mean it means it means lots of different things and it's going to mean different things to us i think individually as players right yeah. i mean if you uh, garrett if you wanted it to be a little bit more um it could be a return to home or something like that or a return home rather than just return home yeah i think if you if you add the the article it makes it um, if i make it the return to home so since yeah it's the one important return right right that yeah, makes it yeah. that makes it yeah i love it uh, everybody is happy with the third aspect also in relation to the other two yeah yeah then uh, the next part is community questions. And each of us will respond to one of the five questions. And each of us to only one of them. That means one will uh, be left unanswered. Um, you have them in front of you. So, um, yeah. I could ask each of you one. Or do you prefer picking? I think it, in terms of analysis paralysis, it makes again sense that I assign them to you. Is that fair for you? That works for me. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Me too. And Brian, from you, I want to know about the first one. Where did we come from? How did we come to know each uh, one another? So detailing that part a little bit more. And. Um, Paul, you go with the second one. What does the compound look like physically? Why is maintaining it so difficult? And <clears throat> Toma, can you answer where do members of the compound spend private time? Are there communal spaces? And I will answer the question, who wields power here? How do they maintain it? So we all think a little bit about it, and if one of you already has an answer, we could start typing it in. Just write into the procedures document, I would say. Taking a little bit of notes there. Hmm. What do you think about having an, an, a convert on, on top of the community, like an ex cartel? Oh, I like that. Kind of course. And because it's always refreshing to swap genders on expectations, making them a woman. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I try, and this is quite, kind of interesting, I try not to be too imaginative here with creating already a word, for example, for her, because that's part of the game, changing our language to have like a nickname for the leader in some sense. So I just say uh, community leader. Okay. 
So the community leader is an X cartel was named. Um, and I give her a name. Um, Saira. Is that pronounceable for English people? Saira? Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh yeah, we can just uh, try it. We can harness technology here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, the second part of my question is how do they maintain it? And she is, um, totally anti-violent anti because that's her past. But instead, she has kind of prophecies. Is that okay for you, or is it too? No, I think it may totally makes sense. Yeah, Pro yeah, prophecies in the widest sense. So she's giving us wise words. Others would say. Anybody else <coughs> ready to answer a question? I, I think so. Uh, I'm ready to answer the first half of my question. So the first half is where do members of the compound spend private time? And I think, um, you know, if, if you want, because the, the island's not huge, right? Uh, um, and so, uh, you know, people may wander in and out of, of those areas kind of at any time. Um, I think the main island, there is a little, on one side of, of the main island, there's a little peninsula that juts out. And there's a tiny little kind of like separate island that has uh, its own grove of trees. Maybe it's even a specific kind of tree, uh, all of a specific tree. And it's connected by sand, but it's almost like a little, like a little beach, right? Like, a, like the water kind of flows a little bit over it or it, it's very shallow, right? So uh, people will walk to that little island um, and that's kind of, uh, you know, a private space. And maybe even before people cross the sandbar to go to the island, there's like some symbol maybe that they use to say, hey, I'm using this spot as a, as a way, you know, for people to respect that it's currently being used. And then they take it down when they come back. So maybe it's almost like a, I don't know, like a special stick they put in, on the beach, um, you know, when, whenever somebody is about to go over there and they take it down when they come back, something like that. Yeah, I will the go there. The equivalent of leaving a sock on the doorknob. Yeah. So let me start with that and then I'll, I'll get to the, the second part whenever everybody else has uh, moved on. OK, cool. I can do mine, if, or uh, Brian, go ahead, yeah. either way. Um, yeah, I just, um, I assumed this meant where we came from before we formed our, our community. Um, if that's the case, then I was going to suggest that maybe we're from a small uh, Mestizo community that is successful and has a pretty high level of education. It's peaceful, it's agrarian, um, and we, the characters all went away to college in the big city, whether that's, you know, wherever that might be. Um, and we returned to find our village in, in great danger from, from the, uh, from the drug war. Does that work? Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, Works for me. College, you get the best ideas. True. So, so, and then for, for mine, said um, mine was what does the compound look like physically why is maintaining it so difficult the compound is a mix of cinder block buildings from our early days and structures made from local materials like those our distant ancestors once built the cinder block structures are gradually decaying because we can no longer replace the mortar and other materials ah. is that cool with people yeah yes. it makes sense <clears throat> 
too much rain too yeah, much insects seriously. yeah the ants <laughs> yeah it would not be my choice i prefer a deep mountain <laughs> enclave but <laughs> Yeah, no one's going to come looking for us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going All off right. cam for a minute, but I am still here. Okay. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> so then we come to the last, to, to Thomas' last part of the question. Yeah, so they ask if they're, oh, so first of all, a, a question on words. I, I'm, I'm curious what they call this small little island that juts out, because, I mean, we have our island, and then there's this other little one, and I, I, I in the, the text, I called it the closet, but I don't know if that's the right, I, I, wanna, I want the word to feel right, and I don't know if that's the right word. I don't know if anyone has ideas. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it gets it's across what you're something. trying to say. It's a, it's a small enclosed yeah. space, um, and it's okay. especially funny considering our our meeting in college. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, let's let's take it. Um, <clears throat> cool. Um, and then, so the second question is: Are there communal spaces? Um, and I'm going to say that. Uh, the main communal space is going to be um, uh, that there's probably when we first got there and we were still learning how to try to create space in the island, the main island. Um, I think we, we cut down a bunch of trees kind of haphazardly and we didn't really know how to cut the area correctly to really clear it for farming yet. And so what we ended up with is this this little clearing with a bunch of uh, tree stumps, right? And it's actually worked out pretty well in that these are now kind of like, almost like chairs or you can stand on them and, and say things. And so oh, we yeah. have this this kind of, you know, it's the original clearing, but you know, as, as time's gone on, we've made better places for that's where the houses are, that's where the farming is. But the original spot, we still left these tree trunks there and it's kind of the, the meeting the meeting space. Yeah, I love that. Communal space. I also like that. Yeah. All right. So I have a pretty good feeling now that um, we can go to the last step of creating our isolation, which is the name. So this is not necessarily, in our case, it could be the official name, but it's the name which reflects how we feel about the community, how we see ourselves. So it could be a nickname than the official name. Um, so what really matters here is the, the name we consider as being the name of the community. The name everybody knows immediately why it was chosen, why this is how people call the isolation. Ooh. <clears throat> island is a pretty obvious choice, something island related, right? Yeah, but if, if you're talking about how we actually refer to it, I think probably we had really big ideas when we first came here. Yeah. So the 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 quote official name on our you know the charter that we all signed in blood or whatever is probably something fancy. Yeah. Um. But but in truth, we probably just you know the the tendency in in now I'm I'm thinking ahead in in terms of the way the the game wants us to think. So I apologize, yeah. but um, that's perfect. Yeah, um, the the tendency I think is to get more and more simple. Like almost every uh, uh, Native American tribe refers to itself as the people. You know, it, it, you know, almost every everything just basically means we're us. So uh, even something as simple as just saying home, or some some very very simple 
kind of one word, you know, cut the philosophy. <laughs> yeah. So it would thing. be something like the island. Yeah. And the official name then was something like uh, Paradise Refuge or whatever, right? <laughs> something right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> How does uh, the island or uh, sound to everybody else? I like it. I wish there was some way to bring in the uh, the river to it too. Um, I can't think of an elegant way to do it though. Um, have this stream around it somehow yeah it's uh, yeah how to do that <laughs> um i don't know it's it is the island it is, our island is is the home it is the enclave so maybe that makes the most sense because people mm -hmm. people will shorten things you know to the ultimate <laughs> to the <laughs> ultimate point which is what makes trying to learn other languages so much harder. <laughs> like, why are you calling it that? <laughs> it's, yeah. I, mean, um, I, don't, I don't know why there, there's this one city called Big Apple. I have no clue. <laughs> 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 But I know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you know, I was going to suggest maybe something like Riverland or something, but I think the island is just so much more, you know, like that's that, those, that would be the word that we would probably constantly use on a daily basis. I think it's a great nickname. How about something like heart of the river, like something about, you know, we're kind of like the center of it, right? All right, yeah. So when we call it the island as the nickname and heart of the river was the official name. And we could, because that sounds imaginative, like something where people would like to found a compound. <laughs> Or it has to just shorten to the heart. Then we go away from the island and just call it the heart. That goes oh, that's kind of cool too. I like the heart. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's neat. Yeah, that, that 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 has a nice, nice feeling to it. Because I can see someone standing up and making a speech. You know, here in the heart, we blah blah blah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with the river running around it, it's almost like the, uh, you know, the the. The arteries supplying it with the necessary fluid so it's it works both poetic both poetic and practical yeah i'm looking if the text we wrote is yeah it's too long i can't copy it in the same document i think or i make the, the font smaller but it's because the indent is so high Oh yeah. yeah. And we might need the space. So yeah, maybe when we have a break, I can take care for that and put that in there because it would be nice to have the, the answers to our questions also in the same document. Yeah, but something to be done later. Um, so now we proceed to character creation and then we have our break. Okay. Um, so for that, we need to go to <coughs> the um, document with all the cards. And in the first two columns, you see the voice cards and you simply click on the one you want to play. Then you press Control C for copy. You switch to the other document, the one with the ages, and press Control V to copy it in there. Enlarge it so you can read it. And that's your character. And then you follow the uh, description on it. So, for example, I could pick the I'd like to pick the the innocent. So I pick the innocent, I copy it into the other one. The description. All right. Yeah, and you also can choose from all the characters now and copy it to the other sheet.
I... I'm going to claim the scrounger if no one else wants it. That works. Oh, wow. I was only looking at the first uh, column. So the first two columns are all character choices. Yep. Wow, that's a lot. Mm hmm. What are you uh, drawn to, Tomer? Uh, there's a couple. I think Celebrity is one of them. Magician was another. And Explorer was a third. <laughs> cool. Yeah, those are all really good choices. I'm looking at uh, Healer or Zealot. Uh, yeah. And then you can already begin by picking one of the scrolls from the the compound drawing and type in the details following the description. Okay. Let's see. How do we choose an individual card like you did? Um, just yeah. click on it and then press Control X, con yeah, or Control X to cut it out, and then oh, Control okay. V to copy it into the other one. Hmm. OK, I think I'm going with the artist. All right. I think I'm going to go with the healer. It's a, yeah, let's try that. Control X. Is this working? All right. So now you know <clears throat> with which as you need to make a decision with which aspects you identify and how your, your relationship is to the others. I, for example, identify with all of them, but one of them means more than I realize. Why isn't this working? Oh, I think I'm in the wrong one. No, that's not it. Um, can I help you, Brian, or is it? I. Okay, I think I was in the in the previous one that you sent, which was view only. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. So I'm no, good the, to go. I should the, be good to go now. The current one is the one with the cards. Yeah. All right. Cool. X. So what is important in character creation is that we all play uh, people in, in the compound of these 200 people which are important, which are that everybody knows them and cares about them in some way. 
Um, so, <clears throat> like important in the sense of that they, they play a role in how the community develops. They don't have to have power, but when they say something, it can change the community. Okay. So, for example, for the expedition on Mars, we had a radio a host, um, the general leading the community, and the top scientist. Huh. Like for sure, they're all important, and this is on a very different level now. <laughs> You see me typing normal numbers as words. It's because my keyboard, since a couple of days, the keys for one, two, three don't work anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, oh, man. Only then you realize how often you need them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, two, three, three. And if the font is too large, just decrease it. If you need to write more, don't have space. And it feels for me like the people talk to you because of dot, dot, dot is a quite important aspect. It's, it helps a lot when uh, framing the scenes. So if you have space, yeah, you could uh, write that into your character description. So I'm imagining for, for my scrounger that that may mean that he, um, that, that, that my character is one that actually does leave the island um, because scrounging in a limited area uh, is not necessarily always as useful as having a wider range. So he's kind of maybe even a hunter or that sort of thing. Yeah. And I think that, that it is, in fact, the river that causes our scarcity because it erodes, you know, it, it, it takes the land from us. It's literally eroding the island. And, and um, it, it, despite the fact that it feeds our agriculture, it's also taking the land that the agriculture needs to, to, to work. Does that make yeah. sense or... Yeah. And so I chose to identify with, with our founding principle, the, the freed ourselves from the drug war and the return to home since he does travel. And um, to pick the, the river as, the, as the, uh, the scarcity causer, despite yeah, the mean, fact that it's uh, also an advantage. Yeah, he, he should not have uh, um, contact with outsiders. That's no, important, no, but uh, leaving the, the jungle is, is, is large. It's yeah. having contact with rhinos or whatever, that's, <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, great, yeah. So I shall take the, the I think I'm done with w what the card needs me to do. So I'm going to take the card off here to give us the space back. Is that the right thing to do? Yeah, <clears throat> sounds good. It's I, I, I can see all the information on your character description. 
But now it won't so let me select the card. Let's see. Cool. That, so that gives me inspiration that Aziza, my innocent she, is uh, maybe a gardener. So for like spices and stuff like that. I'm making um, decorations. Where is I'm going that? to choose one of my favorite Spanish names that I have ever encountered in person and call my guy Primitivo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Yes. That's a pretty great name. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I think you, you may have all, you may all know this, but, but I um, do chorus and small role stuff occasionally with Washington National Opera. I've been yeah. a singer for most of my life. And uh, we did a, a zarzuela once. Um, that was, uh, uh, which is the sort of the Spanish light opera, like oh. operetta stuff. And one of the dancers that came over with the, the director, his name was Primitivo Gasa Berberian. Wow. And, and it, was, it was quite the thing. <laughs> so, That's fantastic. Yeah. Let's see. I'll go with one of my favorite Spanish names, Aníbal, which took me a while to figure out was the corollary to Hannibal. There you go. How are you guys uh, changing the font to be smaller so I can get more in my card? Um, I just, you, you'll, you'll see the, the font size that there's a along the top. Oh, I see it. Gotcha. Yeah. And likewise, you can make your name a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see. Oh, cool. Yeah. I can do that for you. Thank you. So I think my character's name is going to be Jaji. And I think in this case, um, Jaji is not going to be a Spanish name, right? So Jaji is going to be a name in uh, the language of our people as they've come from, you know, these lands sometime in the past. Cool. And it's probably, it may or may not be the name he was born with, right? So maybe he's given it to himself as, uh, as time's gone on, or maybe he's taken on a, you know, a, a word that, that some of us might know, because like, you know, our grandparents probably speak in, in at least partly in the native tongue. Um, I haven't figured out what the definition of it yet is, but you know. <laughs> Cool. We are all nearly done, right? Brian, you are just finishing your last aspect, right? Yep. OK. Interesting. And somehow a wineskin D6 has made its way onto our... <laughs> there was something in, in the um, Zwischenablage, what's the English word? Yeah, in, uh, in the copy. It was copied into it accidentally. Wineskin. <laughs> it was. <laughs> All right, it looks looks good. Are we all done? Yeah. Are you guys um, just deleting your cards, or are you putting them back in the? Uh, we delete them. Just delete them. Okay. Yeah. I will actually delete um, all the cards from the the voice cards now from the uh, uh, drawing um, to make space there because we don't need them anymore. Oh yeah, makes sense. All right, so character introduction. And then we draw three cards, and we, but before we make a break. And the character introduction we can also make after the break, I think. And I, I don't mind if we do that and then do a break. Are you guys OK? 
yeah, mm -hmm. that, that sounds fine. Yeah, just everybody excited enough to do the character creation now. So I introduce Aziza. That's uh, <coughs> Aziza is a woman, and um, she's pretty young. Um, so she was born in the isolation. So she is just uh, eighteen. I can't type 18 because I can't type 1. You, you know what I mean. She's not 8. <laughs> <laughs> I copy it from somewhere when I have the time. So I'm 18. I'm the innocent. I just don't get why people don't get along. And I am i don't understand why sometimes there's so much anger. Um, I'm a gardener. I do a lot of decorations with flowers and I make I make uh, colors out of flowers and other natural resources. <clears throat> um, and I make spices for our food. <clears throat> I um, identify with all aspects, but return to home is something I, as the new generation, don't realize fully what it means. Others. So there's something more behind it. Yeah. This is Aziza. Uh, Paul, would you like to continue? Sure, let me get so I can see you all. Um, Primitivo is not young. Um, I think Primitivo was one of the um, was OG was uh, um, was uh, one of the original people here. I think he's um, in his fifties, probably, and uh, may not have quite the same um, zeal that he once did for the the ideals since we've removed ourselves from the the source of the the problem for long enough but he still believes in the in the community and so he's doing what he can to try to to make sure that that we don't suffer from lack because of the decisions that we made back when um he does leave the island to scrounge through the, the forest, looking for both sources of building materials and you know, occasionally hunts and that sort of thing. So he's kind of the guy that, that is most likely to be able to find you that uh, one, one plant you need or uh, get uh, the extra meat for the celebration next next Tuesday or whatever, that kind of thing. So combination of radar from MASH and the the hunter. Hmm, excellent. And he, so he, he identifies with, and I've, I've sort of already said this, but he identifies most closely with our original mission of freeing ourselves because that's why he was here and with the the concept of return to home quite literally because he often has to leave it and um there's the relationship he has the personal relationship he has with the river is one of sort of uh, respectful antagonism that he knows that the river is crucial to us but it also carries things away from us that 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 we need Yeah, right on. Um, Ryan. All right, so uh, Anibal is also um, one of the uh, older um, original members, a clean cut um, healer of bodies and minds. Um, but he is also known to have occasional outbursts and he drinks a little too much because he knows how to use a still. Um, he mostly identifies with uh, the uh, the river that runs around protecting us, flowing around us, 
um, and the return to home. And um, the drug war is the cause of, uh, of, of his pain. Um, he lost friends and family. Um, you know, he saw things both in the city and when he returned to the country. Um, you know, he may not even have completely finished his residency before he came back home. Um, and he's supplemented with local, obviously local herbs and, and local knowledge. Um, and sometimes he misses the world, which he tries to keep to himself. So, uh, Jaji is um, a, a somewhat young man. I mean, he's 22. Uh, I, I kind of see him as, um, how, oh, sorry, how long have we been here? For 20, 20 years now. Oh, then I'm sorry. Let me, I'm going to change that. No, he's going to be, he acts like a young man. Um, I'm going to say he's now 38 then. So he came here when he was very young uh, or, you know, uh, kind of had, had seen a little bit of what the university might start to look like or that kind of thing. Um, and he is a, a singer and a poet and a musician. Can you guys hear me okay, by the way? Yep. Perfect. Okay, just yes. I saw a lot of frozen frames. So I just wanted to make sure. No, just listening um, intently. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, he um, he has some skills in uh, you know like playing the guitar and that kind of thing. However, as time has gone on, those types of instruments have all you know very quickly uh, fallen apart. So uh, he's focused more on on the singing voice and uh, and and poetry. And you know, and helping people make instruments and helping people play along with him. Mm. Um, however, at the same time, he's a little bit jealous of his skills. Uh, so he kind of, you know, he teaches people how to accompany. He doesn't necessarily teach anyone, especially any of the younger people, how to um, take ownership of of the music or that type of thing. He likes his likes his position, you know, as uh, an you know, people people know him as as the one, and he definitely uh, gives us gives us heart when we're when we're down, right? So there are many times when we're we're low on on resources, we have no food, and we're hungry. Um, there's other kind of natural or other uh, you know uh, disasters which are occurring, and you know those are the moments where uh, you know he's of great use. Unfortunately, those are almost the only moments that he's of great use. Every, <laughs> all the other time, you know, he's kind of seen as being this little bit of a, you know, uh, maybe lazy or, or uh, doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't really learned how to survive out here. He's really kind of a dependent on everybody else, right? Um, he almost exclusively sings about our new home and and the the ties that bind all of us and and you know what this place means to us um and you know of course the river is a big part of that as well um so he, he identifies with those two aspects and he he very much does not talk about um you know where we came from uh and, and there's a part of that which is because you know where we came from there there was the drug on the you know the war on drugs and he didn't have horrible experiences there um but he was more of a drug user at the time so there's some amount like given who he's surrounded by there's a certain amount of guilt like oh was i a part of the cause of all this kind of stuff i mean at this point he doesn't use drugs you know they're they're not available here however he he does uh you know anibal is is definitely an important figure within the context because of that the fact that anibal can make alcohol right um <laughs> that is sometimes a large part of what why his performances do well right in these these miserable times the mm. alcohol goes around a little bit and you know and the and the music and those two things bind together and gives everybody uh you know that little bit of hope yeah that's awesome <laughs> right. um i i have uh, one question, are we all fine with the alcohol playing that role or would we like to replace it with a drug, like uh, just because it, it can be close to home? 
Yeah, think, it's up to you. I mean, we there are other things. Um, well, well, let's first ask a question. Does anybody have? Does anybody want to X that and change it? I have no problem with that, of course, at all. Yeah, if, if, uh, Garrett, if you're not comfortable with it, just you know, we can totally just get, get rid of it. Um, I, I think I would prefer actually alcohol over uh, marijuana, for example. Um, so I'm fine with alcohol. In that and case. and by the way, I'm just. I, I, it's, it's just a very prominent alcohol in our civilization, <laughs> so it plays right. a significant role. Yeah, and um, you know, and I'm okay with, with us playing it. That it's not so much that the alcohol is is of is so strong and and that prevalent. It's almost like it's just enough to give us a little bit of like a reprieve from our daily, you know, maybe not enough really or of any strength for us to really get drunk or anything it's almost like it's just a little bit of happiness just a little bit right of yeah. distance from what's going on it's a reach of yes yeah i like i like the idea of it being um you know sort of a it's it's a bit of an event maybe when you have some um you know and uh you know anibal is is fully aware of the fact that he may be you know samples the uh the event juice a little bit too often sometimes. Um, event juice, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the event juice. <laughs> we are already in, in the midst of language creation here, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I love all these nice. characters. These are these are these are cool people. Cool. So we need to check uh, one thing, which is: are all the three aspects properly? connected to characters and mm. i was i was I, while we introduced our characters it seems like so all aspects are relevant to at least one character in one sense and we can imagine having discussions around these aspects with these characters that's important so it's not that one aspect is ignored then we should consider changing that aspect for example to make it better gripe and also, like this idea, not it's not that there's one aspect where everybody just identifies with and nothing else happens. So, yeah, thanks to Primitivo, yeah. we even have somebody who has like the river runs around us as a very strong uh, reference point, for example. Cool. Uh, connections between the characters, like, do we want to have like a uh, um, I'm 18, so I could be somebody's daughter, for example. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. Um, does anybody I, want to adopt me or have I, me as a I, lover? I I'm also happy to be a lover. Pardon? I, I'll gladly adopt you. Cool. I'm Jaji's uh, daughter. Yeah. And right, I like cool. the idea that, that you're actually competent <laughs> and you've probably grown up realizing you can't learn anything so much of use for me as far as day to day living. But but there's that part where it says what? Um, uh, oh, return to home means more than I realize kind of thing, because that's that's every song I sing, everything I relate everything to has to do with that. Right. Yeah, that's great. Anybody else having an idea for a relationship between characters? Well, I like I that. Um, go ahead. Well, I was I was thinking since Anibal and Primitivo are bar, are both part of the original crowd, the original group. Yeah. That we could easily, you know, have been particular friends or even brothers or or something like that uh, before we came. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think brothers actually gives quite a bit of, of leeway for occasional antagonism as well as yeah cool. yeah so the two of you are brothers and we are father and daughter I, I think I'm the older brother by the way oh, okay <laughs> 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 yeah you can see the uh, the uh, you know, name structure our parents use there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I have a question for you. Is is one of you the one who brought the other here? I mean, I see, for example, Anibal says he misses the world sometimes. Like, would you almost blame your brother for bringing you if he's the cause? Or you know what I mean? Like, is there anything <laughs> like that? Um, yeah, I can I can kind of see that maybe. Uh, 
you know, I knew I knew we had to. After Primitivo explained it to me, I knew we had to go. We I knew we had to come home, return home. But um, even though it's completely inappropriate, I do sometimes. You know, when I'm missing something, and by this time, you know, certain aspects of the world have become almost mythological in my head. You know. Um, the air conditioning, you know, <laughs> things like that, you know, and, you know, if, if I'm in a particularly bad mood, I might, you know, I might uh, attack Primitivo in, in that way, um, which I really shouldn't do. Okay. Yeah. I think my character has a, a natural relationship to Anibal because I don't understand this missing the world by, because I grew up here. And yeah. I don't understand why this could be a problem sometimes like and all the pain which was left behind um the more sensitive question is I, I i i actually would think that with 200 people only it wouldn't be too strange that i for example have a, a relationship with primitivo so even if the age difference is, is large i'm already 18 and if if you don't feel comfortable with that i can easily turn 21 and then uh Jaji was just a very young father <laughs> no I, I i i'm i'm good with that actually i think that would be yeah. um i i don't know how we'll develop the the so how monogamously we'll develop these social structures but but i think it's yeah. perfectly fine uh, fine with me. Yeah, I think that's great. That adds a little bit of tension to my relationship with Primitivo too, depending yeah. on, you know, how I, uh, I approach these things. I love and it. Yeah, cool. Speaking of some tension, I was thinking when, when Jaji was, uh, when we were hearing about Jaji, I was thinking that, you know, I might, um, on the one hand, I, I love the fact that he, um, you know, he is the artist and the musician, and I, these are things that I miss <laughs> from the world that he is able to recreate to a certain point. Um, but, you know, sometimes when I'm pulling, uh, you know, a worm out of some uh, out of the sole of somebody's foot and he comes in, you know, and he's all like asking philosophical questions or working on a new song, I'm just like, Jaji, you know, not now. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you later, okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, you know, there's, there's that whole aspect of he, he isn't immediately useful all the time. <laughs> Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I can see that causing, you know, some occasionally causing like, like Anibal loves him, but sometimes he's just like, man, would you go dig a hole or something? You know? Like... <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think we have come to the point of Vorfreude, which is a German word, which I very much like because of the sound Vorfreude, uh, which is anticipation ah, in English. Nice. But has a Vorfreude is like the pre-joy, the direct translation. So, ah, that's yeah. Vorfreude gives us five minutes of a break. So let's say 35. Okay. We'll see each other again. Good. All right. Sounds good. See you guys in five. Oh, are you guys at 27 after right now? Is that what I'm seeing? Yep. Yes, 27. Okay, cool. All right. 35. Okay.
seems we're all back. Yeah, we're a punctual bunch. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So now we need to switch to, I could do the screen sharing thing again, to the Google drawing with all the cards. And in that, there's space for all the players. I will pick one of them. That's uh, Caesar, damn it. And I will now, and do as well, just pick from the first two columns, which is called story one at the bottom, three cards, which then are in your hand. And every time it's your turn, you play one of these cards and replace it by one from the next age, so from the story two columns. They will be too small to be read on this part, and I think we can also simply read them at the moment when we play them, and then we copy them like the character cards to the other sheet and then work through them step by step. So just pick something which excites you and pull it over. It's then your card. So for example, I pick friend, and I draw it in my direction, and I want... Um, worry. Um, yeah, just pick whatever you like. And our only restriction right now is really picking cards that have the number one, like in those columns? Yeah, just the first two columns are available. And the filler word. And you might need to change the order of the cards to be able to, to read the headline. All right. <clears throat> So while you're doing this, I can explain how the turn structure works. So every time it's your turn, just go around the table, or virtual table, you choose one of the cards and copy it to the other Google drawing, one, the one with the ages, and then we follow the action. And later there come a lot of action cards, they have special rules on it. If there isn't a word saying action, uh, and that's not the case for H1 cards, then they follow the normal turn structure rules. And that is without thinking about already about a word or what exactly to do with it, you choose to which aspect you want to connect that concept. So for example, in my turn, I could immediately start, I could take the word uh, worry, Card and copy it to the other page, and I connect the word worry to, um, I mean, it, it, it would fit to, uh, to so many. I would like to connect it to the river runs around us. And what I do then is, in the center of the, the map, I copy the concept um, drawing form and write worry on top of it. The next step then always is to build a word with it, and that we do as a group. And the one, the players whose turn it is, is uh, facilitating the discussion and picking up ideas, and we do this collaboratively and free form. We explain how, why the aspect has given rise to the new word for the concept. And we should avoid jumping straight to word building. So you might immediately have a brilliant idea, but first let us let us try to get an idea why the, the aspect in our community has changed the word for this concept. Um, uh, and Garrett, I don't know if you want to share your other um, document uh, just for the uh, recording if people are. 
Yeah, I indeed, yeah, I should switch to that one because there you can now see what's going on actually. Um, yeah, there we go. So um, I picked the, uh, the concept worry and I tie it to the aspect the river runs around us. So and after we have created a word, and there are a couple of ideas how to create a word. And for example, the word could incorporate the sound, like the river is floating. So the word for worry could include something like floating away. Or you could clip a word. So from worry, we come to war simply or use an acronym combine words like grasshopper is a combined word which pretty well explains what grasshoppers do i i, I do love that idea of the uh, oh are we starting to talk about it or are you still giving us um, ideas about I'm still uh, giving the yeah, overview and I'm after trying. that uh we do uh, we have scenes between our characters where we state how somehow by role playing how the word is used or not used or confronted, avoided, whatever, by your character. So maybe they dislike the word. Maybe they have a negative relationship. Maybe they love it. Maybe they use it like high five, like whenever they see each other. Um, so we play a scene, and the one whose turn it is decides like who is in the scene, and all the characters in the scene uh, um, will establish the relationship to the word. And only then it's over. The scene is over. Which is <laughs> the end of scene, and then it's done. Yeah, this is the turn structure. And then uh, when everybody has had his or her turn, then we move into the next age. We'll see what happens then. All right. So and now we can follow the instructions on the card and follow the regular turn structure. So we are now in the middle of the game already. <clears throat> I picked the word worry, a feeling stoked by our fears that torments us in quiet moments. A particular strand of worry that afflicts members of the isolation. And I chose the river runs around us because I was inspired by Primitivo's idea that uh, we are having scarcities because the river is constraining us and is like literally carrying our island, our the heart away with it. And so now we think about how this every day, how we are confronted by this scarcity about this, what will happen, like what, how will the heart look like in 20 years from now if this goes on, how this has changed our word for worry. Um, anybody already any ideas? Not like directly jumping to the word, but like how yeah. this could further I, be established. I kind of like the idea of, of when first coming here, you know, what we were trying to do is not concentrate on the negative aspects of the feeling. So, you know, when, when you're when you're feeling that concern, you know, one way to try to deal with it is like by breathing out almost and 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 maybe tying that with like that there's that concept like you guys were saying a flow of the river like you know letting letting that go so almost like trying to turn the word from something of of being frozen and upset to to letting it go or oh interesting yeah so also in a good sense well, in a good sense, except that you're not really confronting the problem, right? <laughs> like worry, worry, worry comes from something, yeah. right? But here you're you're being told to allow it to, you know, go away, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, relieving the stress without really addressing the problem, in right. a way. Um, yeah, I, I do kind of like that. It, it's the uh, equivalent of actually literally saying go with the flow without understanding the implications of what that flow is actually doing. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that coming into it somehow. Yeah. 
to like like drone by the flow or something like where where it's mm, doesn't have any positive connotation anymore because it's a worry huh yeah well, um huh. <laughs> I mean I like the, well hmm I, on the one hand I like the idea of getting rid of it almost like exhale you know air or like letting it go in the river but um i don't know something like that still i mean but it still has to essentially mean worry worry yeah. and and at the bottom of that card is worries boil over so it, it has yeah. to be it still has to be something that that eats at us in in quiet moments yeah um, a particular strand of worry yeah yeah which most members are afflicted not all and we're looking to construct a word yeah we can now carefully going into constructing the word yeah so somebody could say like he has the flow would be the gotcha. use of the word flow he has the blues, he has the flow, that kind of. Right. Or bubbles. Yeah, bubbles, yeah. Yeah, what's wrong, man? Oh, you know, bubbles. <sighs> um, yeah. Something like that. Or we, I mean, or we can create something completely. Yeah, I, I love different. the bubbles idea. Um, like, I imagine that on, on the river, sometimes there are there's some kind of foam or bubble that we don't know what it means and it floats by and it has an origin, but nobody really understands like the worry. Yeah. And even, that. even when you're, if you're told to throw it in the river and let it go, like you're, th what you throw in, you immediately see the bubbles, right? The bubbles come up. So like, it's kind of that residue of, of that concern. Right. And so even putting it into the river to let it, like that's the, the, the nice way of looking at it, try to take that worry and get rid of it. I mean, it's still, there are bubbles there, right? I mean, there's something that it left behind, right? Cool. I can, let's, I can go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. So something like she got the bubbles or the bubbles, yeah. Uh, cool. Well, yeah, I, I wrote that down now in the document. You can't see that anymore, but... Can we say uh, she has bubbles? Yeah. Seems Almost like, like if, 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 you, if you were able to get rid of it and let it flow down the river, there's no bubbles, right? But if you have bubbles, it's almost like you weren't you weren't able to get rid of it all the way, right? There's something residue left over, and that's the worry, right? Yeah. Um, can I can I make a, a possible slight course correction? Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I do like bubbles, but I think if you think about it, given what Tomer just said, right? The the bubbles are evanescent, but but the ripples that are that are left, right? If something's actually stuck and is still is still there, um, being dragged at by the river. You get you get ripples. You get the the, the um, yeah the driftwood in the stream. Yeah. So if it's not actually being carried along, carried if it's not actually being carried downstream, but it's snagged somehow, we can yeah. see the, the ripples it causes. So well, I like that because if, and if you yeah. ignore it for too long, what do you get? You get a bigger concentric circle of ripples, right? Right. Cool. Oh, and it's a word cool. I didn't know until now. <laughs> so I was just <laughs> looking it up and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful word because it follows the flow of what is actually happening. Cool. So would we also say she has ripples then or? or... Yeah, I think that I, I think like so. that construction. Yeah. Cool. All right. Perfect. I'm very happy with that very first word. And from now on, in every conversation we have in the game, we use it. Okay. Whenever, we can. Whenever it makes sense. <clears throat> and now, 
on the bottom of the card, there's a story prompt, worries boil over. And I can frame a scene and bring whoever I want in. And um, um, we can, I think I would like to have a scene with Primitivo. And so it's Primitivo and me in that scene. And so the scene goes as long until we both have established how our characters use the word ripples. And worries boil over, my idea is that there something significant which we used is going to be destroyed by sand being carried away soon if we don't find a solution. Mm. And um, that is, there is a tree and it's getting too wet. And it's a very important tree for me because it has berries which create blue colors for Aziza. And so, Primitivo, I'm afraid my, my the, the blue tree is not carrying berries anymore. It should, they, they should be back already for, for a month now. And they are not coming. I think the tree is getting too wet. It's droning. I have the ripples. I, 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 I just don't know what we can do about it. But you must have an idea. I mean, you, you have solved these things for others as well. Like, can't we build like an, an underground structure or something to save the tree? It's, it's, it's possible, but it's so close. It, it used to be, it used to be three feet farther from the, from the water. And now it's right, almost right up to it. And I, I, is there a play, another place on the, on it, in the heart that you can imagine uh, moving the tree to? I don't think I can move it. I think it's, it would be hurt in the process. But is it, don't you really want to help me? I thought like we, we are so close to each other and you, 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 you sound so defensive. Like, what's, is there something, are, are there, are there any ripples on your heart at the moment? Of course there are, of course. I don't want to see you unhappy. Um, but but you have to understand. you have to understand everything gets carried downstream eventually it's 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 life it's the world but i will do whatever i can i'll see if i can if i can bring uh, some some earth from the from the far shore and and then buttress up the the tree give it give it more more space for the roots to 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 get in to yeah I'll, I'll i'll do what i can of course i'll take you in my arms blue blue is a very very important color of course it is of course it, makes, it is it makes the ripples go away of course and i the whole community I, I, needs blue do whatever you can, please. I, 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 I will. I, 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 I want your thoughts to flow smoothly. And, and I, I will do whatever I can. All right. Thank you, Primitivo. You're a real friend. Of course. See? Thank you. Cool. Uh, I love I love how you ended that too because you could feel almost the ripples kind of go away. like when she said you're a real friend and it kind of like just a little bit you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good. Thank yeah, you very cool. much. So um, that is that is this, that was one turn and now each of us has uh, each of you has a turn and then it's the end of H one. Ah. Okay. Um, so.
Brian, do you want to pick one one of your cards? And I, by sure. the way, I need to now pick a, a card from the story two one and add them to my hand. So you always oh, have three okay. cards in your hand, kind of like you're playing a game of cards or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, this one looks like it might be might be interesting. Um, I delete the worry from our map, and you can copy your card there. Ah. funny when you get to that one point where you're like, OK, I see what the game is doing, and you're suddenly in love. <laughs> yeah, it's really clever. It's really cool. All right, so I've chosen Expletive because um, Anibal is uh, you know, known to have occasional outbursts where he loses his temper with people. Um, so it's an Expletive of choice, a word set inferior frustration and some may find it distasteful. Um, a moment we'll later regret. And so that, that's, that red text is the story prompt for when we get into the scene. OK, all right. All right, cool. That makes sense then. So it's not the um, definition. Like the definition is up on top, kind of, right? Yeah, correct. Ish. That's, that's my understanding. Okay. Yeah. The first thing you need to do is say to which aspect you want to attach the change in the word. Um. Let's see. Uh, let's attach so this that. to um, aspect one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, how did you do that? You just sort of. Uh, just copy that. Yeah, you yep. click click on the border on the frame and then copy paste and move it over. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you need to click on the border of the need <clears throat> not into the text. That's the important part to be able to copy it. I can also do that for you if you like. Oh, I think I got it. You got it already. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yeah. And then you move it to the aspect, and then, yeah, we, um, and then you can facilitate the discussion. Okay. Some may find it distasteful. Oh, strong. Yeah, so this, um, you know, this can be based on something we used to say, or it could be a completely new word, you know, the way that, I mean, the way that swears work, um, sometimes, you know, their, their roots are so buried so deep, who knows what they mean, <laughs> you know, uh, but just something that really, uh, you know, maybe when we're telling a story from the past, or, you know, you, you stub your toe. And this is just a word that we associate with bad times, you know. Could it be related to a, a specific name? <clears throat> sorry, a specific name of someone that was one of the direct reasons that we felt we had to leave one of uh -huh. the players in the. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, sure. So like the. A super corrupt president who was supporting uh, the drug lords. Yeah. Kidnap kidnapping students and killing them and covering yeah. that up and whatever. Yeah. This so it's, really almost nasty kind of a, it's almost kind of a, a boogeyman curse, like the 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 um, all the, the English things that, that reference the devil in one way or another. And is yeah. it is it somebody's name or is it their title, right? Because like, oh man, you know, 
if their title was chancellor or you know dictator, whatever that that word is, right? I kind of love the idea of something like, um, like like you said, this is not meaning to give it a direct example of what I think it should be, but I do love the idea of stubbing your toe and just shouting out president. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Or just like, <laughs> oh, Santiago, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I I do like the idea that it's that it's a title of something that normally we would associate with like someone who is voted into office. Like a president is not like a dictator, right? It's like something that should be okay, but for whatever reason, in our context, it's not. A term of yeah. a term of that, that you would think would be of respect that has right. been corrupted by experience. Yeah, like representative or so so you would expect that they do something but the rep representative. <laughs> they are doing nothing. I mean we are totally disillusionized by the state. Otherwise we wouldn't have yeah. Left. Yeah. stepped out, yeah. Um what about that? What about something short and punchy like rep? Yeah, I kind of uh, like it. You can also make, use it as a as a verb, like it's wrapped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the it's like the George Carlin T-shirt. All the different ways you can say fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't rep yourself, right? <laughs> uh, I kind of like that. <laughs> Something like this, yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm good. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Your choice, uh -huh. yeah. And now you create a scene of a moment we later regret, and you can bring characters in whoever you want. OK. Um... Uh, I think I'll try to bring in uh, Jaji. Um, you know, maybe one of those situations where I'm, you know, I'm, I'm carefully cataloging uh, various uh, botanicals that we've, uh, you know, that Primitivo has gathered for us painstakingly. Um, you know, and you're working on some new project <laughs> um, and looking for some, you know, some feedback maybe. Um, and, I kind uh, of, I kind of like the idea of I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, okay. Well, we we can play it in scene. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you, you go ahead and start it off. Sure. I, I think, like you said, we we see Anibal and he's sitting there and he's, you know, he's got all these different things, right? You have all these different things that you're kind of looking through, like how much of this herb do we have, and how much of of this mash, and you know, the things you have to put together to make. Um, you know, our, our alcohol, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I walk in and, you know, I, I, I say, oh, Anibal, oh, I, I, how, how is it going this nice day? You know, it's sunny, you know, we're not, we're not having rain right now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, like, I, I kind of see you as being distracted, but, you know, I walk in and, oh, it's lovely today. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, um, that's probably exactly what I, I would just be uh, like. Uh, yeah, uh, hi, hi, Jaji. Um, you know, uh, got this thing going on right now, though. Um, working on. Let's see. Uh, let's see. This is Morning Glory. This is uh, how does this work? Yeah. And and so your your back is turned to me, right? And and I am dipping my hand into one of these containers and. You know, I, I find something that I need, right? Which is something you've just cataloged, and I'm just going through it, and I'm, I'm, I'm. You can see this happy look on my face, like yes, I found exactly what I need, and I'm, I'm starting to gather it up, and I've got this big handful of like these long, thin, um, you know, kind of almost like grass, you know, of some type, and I'm like, oh, Annabelle, I, I have to say thank you so much. This is exactly what I was looking for. I'm planning to make strings for my new instrument, and I think this would work perfect. And I've already like half of that barrel is in my arms, right? Yeah. So I'll I'll whip around uh, now that I realize what 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 you've done, and and say, Jaji, you, you've you've repped my entire 
a cataloging system. I, I have to put all that back now. That that is not for strings. That is for sutures, man. Uh, you gotta. Oh, you oh, can't well, even help me put it back. You don't even know how. <laughs> uh, but you you have there's plenty. I, I left plenty in the barrel. I mean, I I only need a few. It's not. But we're friends. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Um. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I just, um, you know, I, 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 oh, please, please don't, don't, don't ripple this. Uh, I, I can just take this along. I, I'll find more for you later. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing. <laughs> There's no need for ripple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you know, I have to go to Primitivo and explain that I have half as many sutures as I did, you know, an hour ago. Uh, and, you know that that's work for him. You know, a lot of a lot of people here do a lot of work, Jaji. Yeah. Oh um. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone understands that, I do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I, you know, Anibal can probably feel like one of those outbursts starting to come on. He's like, he's doing breathing exercises that he's been taught by Aziza. Um. <laughs> um Tell you what, uh, wh why don't you take half of those and I will spend the rest of my afternoon uh, unwrapping this. How does that sound? He's already turning away and walking away and he's like, excellent, thank you so much. <laughs> and like, he is back, he's already walking away. And he didn't even, I think you said you take half of those, meaning half right. of what was in my arm maybe, exactly. right? Yeah. And he just thought you meant, what he already had and he's just walking away with this whole thing. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah, I think that perfectly encapsulates their uh, it, interactions. <laughs> if I can add one little piece, I can see you sitting there like you're you're you know you're trying to breathe and you're getting red and just like rep. Yeah. <laughs> like something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or just yeah, or I'm super angry, so I just use the whole ancient word repetitive, oh, man. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Cool. Thank you. Um, so, Paul, what about you making the next scene? Primitivo. Okie dokie. <laughs> Going for the big guns. Google Docs, thank you. That'll be my stone. Well, oh, wait, I think it came. There we go. Oh, and uh, uh, Brian, you can choose another card too if you want. Oh I yeah, know, from the I noticed because I'm looking for my what I'm planning to do next. From the twos, <laughs> right? Yeah, from the twos, three columns of twos. So, oh, the big one. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Sorry, I, Google Docs is slow for me sometimes, so it weird yeah. things. If you care to fix that, Garrett, it might be better than me fiddling with it. Uh, yeah, I try. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's a, not too much text on that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, still very significant. Death, our language for ultimate loss. Um. Yeah. To which aspect? To connect. OK. I don't oh, feel well, obliged think... to take the third one, <laughs> but it sounds nice. <laughs> Actually, it really works, doesn't it? Um, yeah. If I clicked on the actual document instead of the Hangouts window, it would help. I can also do the logistics. Yeah, why don't you do that, and then I'll, yeah. I'll do the typing. you be my maestro. Death. Death is a 
connected to the return to home. Um, and as to facilitating the conversation, I'd like to, to hear thoughts from others first. Okay. There, there are some obvious, we've been, we've been doing a lot of uh, sort of metaphorical, we haven't done a lot of real creation creation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to try to, to, to find a way that, um, I, I don't know, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I see what you're saying. They're just a um, a completely new word, maybe if we can. Yeah. So in, in uh, isolation creation, we had created this former cartel lady who is now having uh, having prophecies and visions about the future. So if we have like kind of a a faith and a natural faith. It would right, make sense exactly. to have like ancient words, like indigenous words from the area, which we incorporate naively. Yeah. Which could have a meaning in our language, like like uh, returning to the house of the birds or something means to die, to become a bird, but then in a totally different language, something like that. I like that idea. And that, that leads me to then ask, um, and, and this is almost an aesthetic question, right? It, it may mean whatever it, it, its literal meaning is, but um, because I think, I think with my ears a lot, what kind of sounds would you love to, would you like to, to hear in a, in, in a word that means death and loss? Is it, is it a liquid word? Is it a, um, a sibilant word? Is it a long vowels, short vowels? Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of something that sounds um, liquidy, but not too flowing, because it's this is abrupt, right? Death, I mean, even if you want to say it's part of the natural, I mean, it's kind of an ending, right? Yeah. And actually, like, I would I would like yeah. to prefer it having it not related to the river at all. Mm. Be not only because it's a different aspect, but maybe also because if the river is something scary for us, maybe our wish for a death world is something Some, rather dry something. or or airy, mm. like, like to you know the island we are protected on, and now we are sent to the sky, something more like this. So I'm thinking more of a, something like a wind, like a <sighs> breathing, out, breathing out, but like a refreshing breathing out. Is that so such that, a that, No, that to me would mean um, probably both voiced and unvoiced sibilants. So says you, says S's and Z's, yeah. Um, and um, in in hearing you say that, I also hear um, uh, not round vowels, not ahs and os, but e's and as and that sort of thing. Yeah, like like what the zin or tsin that Tomer is typing. Yeah, Something I love like that, that too. Brian, what do you think? Ha. <sighs> I don't know. Um, you know, death is uh, so often tied into um, religious aspects, but we haven't really, you know, addressed that. You know, like we don't we don't know if we're more of a Marxist collective or if we're um, religious in some way. It hasn't come up, so I don't really have anything like that to to go off of. Um, we do have that element of prophecy that is built into what we decided about the leader. Yeah, that's true. So there's at least, if, if, even if not 
religion per se. There's at least some sort, some concept of, of faith because we're putting faith in prophetic visions. Yeah. Um. What if there's um? So we're on a very old island, right, in the middle of a a a, a you know what's effectively a jungle, right? Um. It would be interesting if there's you know, not ruins of the kind where we're talking about like pyramids or something, but, you know, ruins in the sense of there's like a couple of old stones, right? Like that are obviously have been carved hundreds or thousands of years ago, right? And so, and you know, not even a structure, right? It's like a stone here or there. And so that almost signifies like that, that it, it's, it's away from the water, it's grounded, right? Um, but it's also, part of who we were long ago maybe it's ancestors something like that i could envision uh something like the, the very oldest of the the olmec standing stones right that sort of thing just an isolated instance of something like that where the the carving is barely distinct as carving anymore because of years and years of wind and rain yeah um oh, and so um, so maybe it is something I like the, I like both the idea of ascent that, that Garrett brought in and the idea of, of, of grounding that comes through the stone and maybe, maybe whatever this word is kind of embraces that duality. Um, um, but, uh, I still kind of like those the the TZ sound that Tomer came up with as a thing. It's it's not a it's not an initial sound in in for any of well, it is for Garrett in his native language, but for the rest of us, it's not usually an initial sound. That's um, and and I uh, I kind of like that as as a thing to set it apart for us as players as this is a thing that, that is new, even to the characters. So which direction kind of um, sound wise did we want to go? Do we want to go in, in sort of a, you know, uh, death is a, is a freeing and a, and a leaving of the island or is it, is it a um, grounding of, into the island and becoming part of it? Well, I think, um, the to me i think it could be both right it, the, in that duality i think the tz gives us a sort of a windy airy feel and then if we end with like that that on that that brings us the 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 nasal consonant at the end the voiced nasal brings us brings us to a the, an aesthetic sort of point of grounding because your mouth is closed so yeah. um, that's awesome. So it's on. So I kind of, I kind of, yeah. And I, and I would make it an actual O in, in the way so, I, I, the way I would son. I like that. With so, a little emphasis on the end. Yeah. yeah and I, 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 like I, I love, I love that there's a duality there. Like it's almost like, and we were talking about the grounding and the flowing. And I mean, when you think of the death, it's almost like there's a part of the body, like even the body itself, which maybe flows away down the river kind of thing, but there's the spirit which stays or something. You know what I mean? Like that kind of like yeah. part of this person has moved on and part of them are grounded and they're part of our right. thing or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. With it forever. Yeah. The mouth so, closed, is it M, like Marta at the end or an N like North Pole? North Pole. North Pole. I typed it yeah. in the in the play sheet. But, well, yeah. So on. I, it, it feels so great. It, it really feels like going from sky to to the center of Earth. Yeah. <laughs> thank, oh, and oh. thank you so was... much, Paul. Because that that I love. Like you're coming from a perspective where you're you're hearing about sound and things, and it, like that was that was a really neat exercise. Yeah, it totally. was a fun yeah. way to go about it. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Paul is, I would say, already the special guest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, with such um, a background, it's just perfect. Now I'm framing a scene, and it's um, literally letting go. I think is the prompt. Yeah. 
I have bad eyes, so I can't see the whole play sheet at the same time. Yeah, letting go is the prompt. Yeah. I think I'd like to frame a scene with all of us at that standing stone. The the you know the barely the the ancient enough that you can barely tell that it was ever carved. It's it's, it's the only one like it on this island or anywhere particularly close. So it's it's mysterious to us as to why it's even here. You know, yeah. why would those people have, have, have put it here in that, is it, was it a memorial for something that happened here? Was it um, just a fortuitous accident that, that they found this particular bit of stone in this place? Um, and I think we're all there and that, that we are literally letting go. I think the, the, the way to frame this scene is to say that we are saying goodbye to someone. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Is it is it the leader? Is she is she gone? No, I don't think. I think maybe not quite yet. Ooh, can we do something and like you know? And I'm okay if again we we've always got that X card, right? So we can always. Um, uh, put that in play if anyone's got a problem with this, but actually have it be someone fairly young, like, you know, someone who just hasn't really gotten their time. And, you know, like we, we're struggling with a lot of stuff here, right? Where we don't have access to, um, you know, modern resources, if you will. Right. Oh, yes. Are people okay with that? Yeah. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah. And that makes it even, it's, it's harder for us to embrace the letting go prompt. And I think it's good <laughs> to yeah. uh, make it harder to embrace that prompt. Right. Um, Man. So I think much of the, much of not all, because I don't think we could all fit necessarily in this clearing or whatever, but much of the community is present. And um, uh, since I'm setting the scene, um, Jaji, um, I think we'll we'll start with what what kind of song are you usually asked to sing? I think in the context of most situations, Jaji sings, you know, with a lot of vocals, right? I mean, Jaji will sing about. Um, you know about the event or try to mix in you know metaphors and and sometimes not not overly flowery language but try to make it you know relevant sometimes in subtle ways and all that kind of stuff however i think in these situations jaji does not use lyrics so i think jaji is simply um you know uh in in kind of a somber way is humming you know uh humming a kind of tune and and we hear in, in a way that that maybe that flow within the tune as well right um you know and so you'll hear them um, maybe there'll be parts where you know um and, and it wanders i think it's very um improvisational right so he'll start and you know they'll be like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just goes on and on, and uh, you know, I think there's a, a kind of a zone about it, and then it eventually just kind of like uh, stops. Sounds like the chorus is so. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I think actually, um, in a lot of in a lot of cultures that have become mostly vocal, um, again because of. Uh, either the difficulty of maintaining instruments in an environment or whatever, there's often a drone so that that I think maybe some of the others are 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 holding a, a drone note Ooh. under you while right. you're while you're doing that. And that's part of the that's that's where the 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 tone like a, a drone is uh, a single tone that's held in and and, and 
everything else moves around it, Garrett. The, the, Thank you. the melody would move around it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love it. Um, cool. Um, man, Whatever. I saw the scene, and I have no idea how to actually for us to interact in it. That honestly, that could be the scene. Like we're hearing the word, right? So yeah. deeply in, yeah. Yeah, it, it yeah, nails I think it. We have to talk yeah. to each other. <laughs> yeah. It nails the meeting home, things. and yeah. But I think, although I, I I didn't want to come because I have so much the ripples. Um, however, I think we should all say it's on together. Oh yeah, that would, that would nail it. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Three song. <laughs> song. 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 Yeah, that's a good one. I love that that that's the way we're hearing it said. So, you know, we're not hearing it said as a word. It's not a word. Like it's almost like it's said in the context of this ceremony. That's, you know, at least so far, that's that's the way we've heard this word, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. I have goosebumps. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And and you can't uh, see, but it's 25 degrees Celsius here. So <laughs> I have no reason to have goosebumps. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we're actually very excited. It's negative 1.6 here, I think, today. I'm definitely going for a walk after this. It's a heat wave. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks, Paul, for uh, pushing us in the direction of a brand new word. I think that was a really cool process. Um, yeah. You know, uh, just a really fun this is a really fun process. I just really, you know, this this game is delivering so far. So <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, Toma, your scene. Chachi. Okay. How do you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You have well, all the tools in your hand. <laughs> let's follow it with a special occasion. Oops. Put card here. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Um, and we're gonna have a special occasion, which is one of celebration. I think cool. so. A celebrated event. It's either particular to the isolation, or we have a unique way of recognizing it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say this is particular to our isolation in the sense that it's. Um, you know, maybe a, a kind of event that many cultures have, and they no longer recognize what that event uh, actually symbolizes, right? Because they're distant from maybe food production or things like that, right? So here we have an event which is celebrating a harvest, right? And, um, you know, that's something that's, I mean, it's in our face. And in fact, it's not even, and when we think of harvest, I think we normally think of you know maybe spring or plants that are grown and that's not what this is this is a harvest in the winter right and i know winter like we're in the jungle we're not talking about winter like it's cold but maybe this is a time where certain plants and flowers are not blooming as much during the year that's when i say winter i mean it's not when normally we have an abundance of fruit um there's a little period of time where you know maybe it's a uh, you know, uh, a bit of a rainy season and the plants are not quite flowering yet. And, but there's a, there's a fish that, that comes in abundance up the river, right? Almost like it's migrating during that time. And we only see this fish during this one time, right? And, uh, you know, around, around this time in the year, I'm just thinking like, you know, somebody who happened, like, I don't know if we even know how to predict it, right? Like somebody happens to see it. Um, yeah, and definitely it's aspect two, right? This is the river. And somebody um, happens to see it, you know, like signs of the fish maybe, and this is the initial, like somebody's seen one or two or a couple of them or a school of them. And now we know it's coming, right? The, the, the herd, right? Just kind of like almost like a salmon run, right? Yeah, awesome. Um, Love it, yeah. And I think it's it sounds so much like uh, uh, that it can be combined like with a, a, a coming of age ritual like this when you become an adult, like kind of thing where you do this 
as a courage jumping in the river and grabbing the fish or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's, it's definitely, a, you know, an event where everyone's brought together because I think maybe leading up to it, sometimes we, you know, we're hungry. This is a time where we have less. And, you know, you know, it, it's almost like it, if this doesn't happen, I mean, it, it spells bad things for our community, right? Right. Um, and so we, we look forward to it, you know, as a, it becomes really a, a very happy kind of celebration. Yeah. I, I want to say I would, I'd like it to be kind of almost named in some way, I don't know. I'm I'm open here, but like maybe it's after the like something about how the fish looks. I don't think we know what this fish is actually called in the real world, but like maybe there's a color of the fish or a smell that it has, or I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I I need to to Google a, a list of colors now. Tantone four sixty five. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can see, like, if you've seen, uh, regardless of the the way a single salmon looks, if you've ever seen a run, like a like, video of a, a salmon run as they go up river to spawn, it looks like the entire river just turns silver. Um, yeah. So I can definitely see something like that as, you know, whatever we choose as that color, I can definitely see something like that being part of part of that word. Or part of the, the phrase. There's also a lot of uh, a lot of movement as part of that. Um, so I just want to throw out there as a possibility, like when we come up with the word, maybe we add some element of repetition in it. You know, maybe the last two um, word, that last two letters, maybe are repeated, um, or you know, something along those lines to indicate, you know, this movement. I love that. Yeah. I, I, the first word, uh, color, which came up there was amaranth. Ooh. And that sounds like a run, amaranth. <laughs> yeah. What actual color is that? I don't even know. It's, it's got to be a yellow, right? I, I, I don't have the words <laughs> in English to describe it. So There's how, amaranth how did... deep purple, amaranth pink, amaranth purple, amaranth red. I think it's okay. some orange kind of thing. So how about something like I'm a ran ran or I'm a run run? Yeah. So that would mean we have like flashing purple um, fish. Oh. Yeah, it's named uh, the, the reason it's amaranth is, is purple. It's the flower of a particular um, grain plant. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so is, is, is the, that is that color. So, um, but it's I like that. Yeah. And it's a word that you would never use. I mean, right? It, it's a word that it would be easy to to move away from its original context because we never. When was the last time you used amaranth in a? sentence literally never yeah <laughs> yeah so what do we think of something like that i'm a run run or something i'm a run run yeah i like i love that i think it has a cool special occasion sound to it um mm -hmm. what do you think uh paul mm -hmm. is it does it have the kind of sound that you I like yeah, I like it. It feels it feels good. Either either repeating at the end or repeating. I, I could also see ama amaram or something Ooh. like that. Um, but but I think it works either way. Ama You know, I think I I might like this. I might like this better only because ami is friend in so many languages. Right. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. You make the final decision. Uh, I, I'm, I'm down for that. Ami Amiran. Ami Amiran, yeah. And only we know how this word came to birth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, is gonna, this game is going to be extremely handy when I finally get uh, Alzheimer's years from now. I'm gonna... yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you it's... trying to say, Brian? <laughs> you know, I like somehow. Yeah, go ahead. 
it's somehow it's that one person 20 years ago that knew the name for that color right said it once and then <laughs> all context is gone yes totally. i like that I, I love mean, the idea just, that, that maybe even the kids were the ones who repeated it, right? Like, imagine a kid trying to say amaranth, right? Right. Like, Am yeah. Amaranth, you know, like yeah. something. Yeah. So true. So the time has come. So, and uh, oh, just a question about the game itself. Like, when you set a scene, do you have to be in the scene? Is it always kind of assumed that your character is in the scene? No, you, you can say, I'm not in the scene. Okay. Um, yeah, let me think about it for a second. So the time has come. Yeah. Um, well, I definitely want Aziza in the scene. Um, being our uh, gatherer of colors, it kind of seems appropriate. Um, yes. I'm very busy this time of the year. And I kind of, you know what? I kind of like, uh, huh? It's interesting because Primitivo normally associates the river with scarcity. True. And I kind of want that juxtaposition in here. I don't know exactly how it'll play out. I'm down. Um. Yeah, actually, I just want you two in the scene. Let's see how that plays. Oh, cool. thank you very much. Yeah. Like, uh, so, I, I'm very curious, first of all, Primitivo, uh, did my, my tree survive? Oh, yes. I did, I did at least what I said, which was I tried to build out, um, build out some, some earth, actual soil around it so that the the water had more and probably also tried to do something like a, a french drain you know a, just a, a a small rock line channel to try to divert a little bit of the of the water away from it can it's i interject be... a little bit here yeah, yeah sure can can i say that uh as much as primitivo has made these um you know these these moves to try to protect the tree i think in his in his mind and in his heart he knows this tree's gone this is not going to work right oh yeah and this no, is absolutely. part of, right and this is part of the, the river is not you know is causing problems right and i i want to see that it's almost like it's primitivo who sees the fish first right well, that what, what i was going to say oh, is i what, think that, that yeah no I, I i agree with you i'm what i was going to say is i think that the tree is on the um, sort of a, a slight projection on the downstream side because yeah. we said the fish were coming upstream. Um, and I think that he is there, I think he probably spends, um, he probably at least goes past that tree every day trying to make sure that things are still working or to evaluate how little they are working. <laughs> um, and so I think he's probably already maybe there, if this is OK with you, Garrett, he's probably already at the tree yeah. and just sort of staring down, uh, down river and, and watching as, you know, watching as little bits of sand and, and are, are eroded, um, the, the, the little, you know, bits of flotsam that are carried on the current. Um, and from your perspective, you wouldn't necessarily know whether he's got the ripples or he's just doing that thing where he stares downstream that he does sometimes. Yeah. I'm so, coming but, from behind. But I think we, what? Yeah. I'm coming from behind. Yeah. Uh, without you recognizing, and I'm I'm actually you might have not expected that, but uh, I'm actually quite tall. Um, must be my mother's genes, and I'm I'm coming from behind you and taking my arms around you, just around your breast, and looking with you over the river. Um, I would know if it was someone else, so 
I, I would sense it. So I don't startle when you do that. Um, and I'm just sort of watching, as I said, watching the water, watching what, what is being carried away from us inexorably carried away from us. And I lean back into you just a little bit. And I say, I will keep doing what I can for your tree, Aziza. Let me tell you, the berries. Soon it will be time for Ami Ami Ram. And there's no blue. That still doesn't have berries. Do you think they will still come? There will be berries. There will be berries. I have such ripples. I understand. And I'm doing everything I know to ease those ripples, Aziza. I think as we're hearing this conversation, like us as the audience, we, you know, like the water is, is flowing pretty still, but like we see, we're starting to see like, you know, a little splash in the distance and maybe then another one, you know? Um, and I don't, I don't think they've noticed it just yet, but we're, we're starting to see that, right? Yeah. Because of my role in the community, but because of the way that, that I'm often on my own and have to be have a certain situational awareness, you know, because giant crocodiles and things like that. Um, I think I am the first one to pick up on it. It's a different, I mean, Aziza obviously has clever eyes, but they're used to, to focusing maybe more narrowly on individual things. Yeah. Or minor right or restless. Right now I'm just completely absorbed by your presence. I'm, I'm having you tight in my arms, my head next to you. My eyes are closed right now. I just hear the river, but I don't see anything. I think when I first notice it, it's just one or two fish leaping. And individuals don't usually do that it's it's usually when they're at the the leading edge of the school that you see that kind of behavior and i watch for another little while and then i say aziza open your eyes Look. Do you see? I see them. And I should be happy. Right? Ami Amiran is close. We need to tell the others. Right. Yes, we do. I love this idea of the two of them. Like, you know, Aziza is, is should be happy and she's not, right? And so there's this quiet, like, even though this is they're they're seeing this, there's this quietness going on there. Like there isn't celebration yet. But then in the background, you hear a, a child, you know, maybe eight years old or something, and they're like, Ami Amiran, Ami Amiran. They're like super excited and they just, you hear her, them running into the forest and they're running back to the, you know, to the group. Ami, ami, ra, ami, ami. And you hear it like getting further and further away. Yeah. And I think, I think one thing that, that I don't know how to, I, I'm just going to give you internal monologue because I think for, for Primitivo, this is the one time that something comes back up the river. This is the one time that something comes to us from downstream. And so there is a, 
there is a sense of there is for him a real sense of being able to let go of the ripples for a time at this and you know this this thing about the barriers could be a conflict that that winds up being difficult yeah <laughs> Uh, excellent use of both ripples and Ami Ami Ron. That was, that was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that yeah, was so, so good. Ripped. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to tell Aziza there are other crayons in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. But this tree is totally drawn. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's so, great. Good. Thank you very much. And, Thanks, guys. Yeah. That was awesome. So we end today's session, I would say, by entering, reading the, the beginning text of H2, because that would be the perfect cliffhanger, I would say. <laughs> Sounds good to you? Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Then. Um, Can we get in Paul's voice again? <laughs> oh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Can you? Yeah. I am finding it. I also need to find it. So here, where's the, there's the document. So when you go down to changing the age, there is <coughs> H2, it says under 3.4, and then comes yeah. in italics comes the text. So this is the an event to foreshadow the end of this isolation. It, fi it finds it, uh, its way into all conversation and is impossible to ignore. We had no choice. The compound would have collapsed without their help. We let an outsider in. We thought we could control it, but they have the ear of someone important. Why have some suggested we should bring in more? Oh. And that is where we end. <laughs> That's great. That is yeah. great. Nice. Ooh, scary. We, I don't want them in. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I've become very insular. <laughs> there you go. That's, That's excellent. Yeah, like, yeah. Unfortunately, the game has done a good job. Yeah. yeah. Toma, you're not around next week, right? No, I, I actually have a flight like right in the middle of that time. So I'm going to be going to the uh, airport and whatever. Otherwise, yeah. I would try to definitely make it happen. But I, I would be happy to uh, go out and, uh, you know, try to evangelize and get somebody into that <laughs> slot if you want someone new. However, I think, like, we are all also happy just the three of us. That's um, fine, too. Because it, it's, a, it's a delicate game to bring yeah. a new person in, right, with the language already created. Although, it would be given, the outsider. <laughs> given, yeah, that's right. Given oh. what the game about. <laughs> That could be actually interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, another wise rule is always when you play a game for the first time, you should not diverge from rules as written too much, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, or what do you believe, Brian and Paul? Would you like to have a, a fourth person in or prefer us continuing? I think we have a pretty good jazz going here as, as it is. And I, I, I might prefer, I'm not normally that guy that says, no, don't bring anybody in, but I think I might prefer just sticking with the three of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with this particular game, I think that might, that might serve us better. I mean, I'd, I'd be totally cool if somebody else, you know, pops in on the wait list or whatever and they want to join, yeah. we'll figure it out. But, um, you know, just because we've sort of created this shared language and culture, it might be cool to just uh, keep riffing off that. Yeah. Let's destiny decide. If when somebody jumps on the wait list, then um, we have a fourth person, and they are absolutely welcome. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, yeah. So no, we, uh, we won't actively seek it out. Right. Yeah. No ripples, man. <laughs> <laughs> no ripples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will stop the recording now, and we could do like a little bit of feedback directly now, if you like, and but um, not on the recording. Okay. So. Goodbye, audience.